Big Crazy John here with Big Crazy Outdoor Adventures. On this channel, we like to promote getting outside and having some fun. If you like doing that and you want to support the channel, please hit that subscribe button. And today, we are going to do something that's not so fun, but is very much necessary to have fun next year. So today, we're going to winterize our Forest River Flagstaff Microlite 25 BDS. And when I say winterize, um, what I mean by that is to get all the water out of the camper, uh, to get it ready for freezing temperatures, and you know prevent getting a pipe broken. And to do that, we pump antifreeze into the water system, which gets into all the you know nooks and crannies of the pipes and all the low spots, gets that water out and puts the you know antifreeze that won't freeze into the into the water pipes. So we prevent pipe breakage and costly repairs. So. And again, that's, it's not something fun, but it, it's, it's gonna help prepare us for next year so we can have fun. Um, so the, uh, there is an alter alternative method for uh, doing this kind of winterization. Um, some of our friends uh, use a air compressor and they'll blow out the lines. So that, it's a little bit cheaper method. Um, and also, the, you know, if you don't really wanna have antifreeze in your water system and you wanna minimize the amount of that, blowing out the pipes is a good thing. But we don't really use the water system for water, drinking water, so it's it doesn't it's not really an issue. And, and you already have to get it into, you know, the pump, the low water drains, and, um, you know, a lot of different spots. So you're gonna have to get some antifreeze in it, so why not just, you know, really commit to it. All right, there's 10 steps to winterizing. I'm gonna run through them real quick, and then hope you stay tuned for the actual video, more detailed version. You'll see me go through all the steps. So step one uh, of the 10 steps is to turn the bypass for the hot water tank. And we uh, bypass that because we don't want all the antifreeze going in the hot water tank. And then step two, we turn the valve for the um, antifreeze inlet um, from, you know, the city water inlet to the antifreeze inlet. So it goes into the pump. And then step three, we remove the uh, water filter. And step four, we set up our gallon antifreeze um, outside to the antifreeze inlet. And then step um, five, we turn on the pump, let all the lines fill with antifreeze. Step six, uh, run all the sinks. So I would suggest starting in the shower, or I'm st starting, yeah, start in the bathroom, run the shower, run the sink, run the toilet, go onto the kitchen, run that sink, go outside, run that sink, and make sure you get the shower outside. So you, you fill all those. You go to step seven, and you wanna pour extra antifreeze down the drain. So there's traps that are under the drains, you know, in the, in the bathroom, in the kitchen, and outside. And you're gonna to wanna to fill those so that you get the water out and you fill them with antifreeze. And you're, you're also wanting to pour extra so it gets down to the black tank, gets down to the gray tank. So step eight, the city water inlet isn't in most directions as far as winterizing, but this was a, actually a piece of advice we got from MB Thomas, one of their guys. Um, with the winter, their winterizing steps said, try to get some antifreeze in that city water inlet because that um, can have water in it and it can it freeze up and break. So um, that's something we do. It's a little challenging. You'll see it. we use a funnel and a, the hose and try to pour it in there. It's, it's not really uh, not really easy. There's probably a better way to do it. And if you have an idea, let me know. So step nine, get the food out of the camper and clean the camper. Make sure there's no crumbs. We don't want to have anything that attracts mice. And step 10, the final step, is to take the camper to storage for us, you know, wherever you store it, maybe you have a place at your property, but um, take it to where you store it, take the battery off. And I put the battery on a trickle charger. So those are the 10 steps that we do. If uh, you guys have other suggestions as far as steps you do and things that you might change with how we're doing ours, I, Happy to hear it in the comments. So stay tuned for the detailed uh, steps next. All right, turning this hot one up so it's not perpendicular, so it's vertical. And then the cold one, doing the same. I'm actually turning it down so it is not parallel, but perpendicular. And this valve here goes down. 
So it is parallel. So the hot does not come out, the cold does not go in, and it flows through the bypass. This is where the pump is, and currently it's going through the city water inlet, and we want it to go through the uh, antifreeze inlet, so I'm gonna turn this down so it is parallel. My assistant's holding the phone. She's so great. All right, and it is now parallel. All right, so we are not currently using the filter, but we want to get that water out and we want it to fill with antifreeze. So, paper towels under the um, where the water filter is. It's full and um, whenever you take it off, it, it since it's full, it, it drips some water and makes a little bit of a mess. So best to have some paper towels under it. One of the big keys is having this tool to get that off. I did not have this tool once upon a time and I cannot get this off. So that would be a case of I wasn't careful. <laughs> All right, so we took the filter out, put the canister back on, and tighten it back up here. Hot tool. We had a bypass for this. That'd be nice. Means it's gonna fill up with antifreeze, and that's kind of a waste. If there was a way to bypass this, that would be useful. So we uh, have this old guard nose that we connected here, and this is where the antifreeze inlet is. And note it says close the valve to the tank, open the valve to the inlet, which we did, and we we're. Got our antifreeze here. We're gonna have uh, in the inside doing the uh, faucets. Okay, we're gonna turn the water pump on. And we're gonna come over here. It's filling right now. It's filling. I let it fill up the lines. Once it's filled up the lines, I'm gonna turn on and let that run. Still filling up the line. She's gonna turn the pump on. Go ahead. So, water pump is pumping in antifreeze. the shower. Now we're doing the toilet. Okay, last we're doing the outside kitchen sink. I'm gonna come out here and do the shower.
Okay, we're gonna disconnect the antifreeze and connect it to the city to try to get some antifreeze into the city connection. So we're gonna pour some antifreeze into this funnel, which will go into the garden hose, and we're gonna try to fill, just put a little antifreeze into that connection there and into the line. So this is the antifreeze that we used. We used about five and a half gallons, which is way overkill, but uh, you know, we're extra cautious and this is negative 50 degrees. So it's uh, just a Walmart special and that, you know, you don't have to get anything special, just antifreeze for RV and Marine. This is the 10th step, and hopefully the final step. <laughs> um, so, the battery. I take the battery off at the end of the season. Um, we'll put it on trickle charger. Whatever you do, don't let this touch metal as you're doing this. Don't let these two touch each other. So, my safety tip. Twist grip, spline, dog bone. So it's got all these different sizes on it. All right, one other cliff note caveat. There's three things that I didn't mention in the 10 steps. So number one, the hot water heater. We always take the anode, anode out of the water heater. So after every trip, we take that out. So it drains the water heater so we don't have the water getting funky in there. Uh, so that's not part of our winterizing. Anode, we take that out and we just let it dry there. Number two, low water drain lines. Uh, normally after every trip, we, we open those up, let them drain out. Uh, with the winterizing, we put the caps back on so you can get the lines pressurized so you can, you can fill up the lines with the antifreeze. So with our camper, the low water drain is here. So there you go. Um, number three, the fresh water tank. Um, in the past, we haven't put antifreeze in there and um, I have seen on some other YouTube videos that they do that, and we've never been advised through the winterizing process um, through two different places. Uh, however, this year I'm gonna go ahead and pour some antifreeze down the freshwater tank uh, and just let it fill up and then I'm gonna drain it just so it gets through the valve. We've had it open, there is no water in there, it's been drained, so technically you don't need to do this, we're just being extra cautious, so. All right, so I'm gonna open this up. Okay. So that is the antifreeze just pouring out, and uh, that should cover that valve, so that should not be an issue now. If you're a camper and if you have a camper pop up, whatever, and you got a water system or you, you do things to get ready for winter, let me know in the comments what, what those are. If maybe there's something I missed or if you have some ideas on things we can do different, I'd appreciate it. And I'm gonna remind you to get outside and have some fun. Thanks for watching.